This will finish up the fourth act of Bartholomew Fair. I want to go back to just one thing in Act 3. Um, I kind of like Nightingale and Edgeworth, not only for their daring, but uh, in some ways for their, their decency. Um, on page 135, this would be Act 4, Scene 2, at line uh, 52. Edgeworth uh, talks to the costermonger that uh, they've tripped up in order to get uh, Bartholomew Coke scrambling after the pairs. And he says, away, costermonger, come to us with Ursulus. Uh, the point uh, being, or the implication being, that they're going to do something to make this costermonger whole to recompense him for his loss of pairs, which is uh, a kind of honorable thing for the, this pair of thieves uh, to do. Uh, the main thing that happens in the rest of this act, I think, is the game of vapors that occurs between uh, Knockham, Wasp, uh, Val Cutting, and other characters. So what is this game of vapors? It's apparently a kind of drinking game uh, where people sit around the table and uh, contradict each other. No, no matter how ridiculous the contradiction is, even if it contradicts something that the character has said before. They just contradict each other and they take turns going around and around and around the table. Um, and it's a little bit like some word games we have today, playing the dozens, where uh, the object is to insult another person's mother and to come up with more and more spectacular insults. Okay, well the game goes awry because Wasp is part of it. Wasp Wasp is like this anyway. You would think that he would be the champion player of Vapors. But Wasp gets serious about it, and he doesn't let other players take their turns, and pretty soon he's very angry, and so pretty soon they have quite a, quite a fight going. Now, this seems to be intentional on the part of, uh, of Nakam and some of the other characters, because as the fight progresses... They use it as an opportunity, again, to steal stuff, to steal clothes, whatever people are carrying that has been um, left so that, uh, by characters who are participating in the fight. So off they go. And um, in this time, Wasp is the one who is taken to the stocks. So we have three characters taken to the stocks, and uh, it's interesting that all three of them are critics of the fair. Overdue, busy, and Wasp. So Overdue and Busy are off with some officers who are trying to find um, Justice Overdue. Trouble All has given them the notion that you can't do anything without Justice Overdue's written. They think, yeah, that, that's not such a bad idea. We better make sure that uh, we don't do anything Overdue doesn't want us to do because he's kind of difficult to deal with. So we'd better find him. So when um, Wasp arrives at the stocks. Neither um, Busy nor Overdue are there. Uh, they're getting ready to put Wasp in the stocks, and then the officers with Busy and Overdue show up. They stock them, but good old Numps has a trick up his sleeve. Instead of putting his foot in the stock, it would hold him, and then apparently their stocks would just uh, clamp onto one foot, he puts uh, his hand into one of his shoes and puts that into the stock and when they lock it uh, he pulls his hand out and his legs are free and uh, off off he goes um, so we have gotten these two people out of the way and in the meantime we have Corliss Edgeworth invites Corliss to partake of the ladies at um, Ursula's tent and Corliss gets angry with him and and tells him that he doesn't want to see him anymore. And if he does, you know, he's very likely to put the law onto him. So that ends that relationship. And Corliss says, you know, once you once you participate in a crime, unfortunately, it removes social degree, and social degree is important to Corliss. Corliss would like to find out how Trouble All checked the name in Grace's book. Now the plot to marry Grace, uh, of course, depends on their getting that marriage license out of the box from Edgeworth. So they're able to do this. Uh, and so apparently what they have in mind is crossing out 
the name of uh, Bartholomew Cooks and inserting either Winwife or Quarles's name into the license. Uh, I don't know whether that would actually be legal or whether they could get away with that, but that's how the uh, plot of the play goes. So Corliss wants to find out whose name is in there, and he questions Trouble All. Of course, he can't get anything out of Trouble All. I think it's interesting that the only character who really knows how to deal with Trouble All is Knock'em. Knock'em, to me, is just an interesting minor character in this. Um, he seems to understand people very well, and he invites Trouble All for a drink. And uh, Trouble All says, eh, I can't have, it, can't have a drink unless I get uh, Overdue's warrant for it. So Knock'em says, okay, I'll, I'll get one. And Knock'em just writes up a warrant, signs it as Justice Overdue. And Trouble All says, oh, great, now I can have a drink. And they drink together. And you realize that Knock'em is more shrewd than uh, Corliss. Uh, had Corliss been smart enough to draw up a warrant to Trouble All, telling him to reveal whose name was checked, Trouble All probably uh, would have done it. But it simply doesn't occur, occur to Corliss uh, to do this. And I think that this gets down to a thematic point in the play, which is has something to do with human sympathy. Uh, Nakam is one of the characters in the play who can sympathize with other people. Sympathizes with Urs when she uh, burns herself. Sympathizes with, with Trouble All. It doesn't make him any less of a knave, any less willing to rob people when he gets the chance or to work for uh, Ursula in all kinds of endeavors that aren't quite uh, legal or ethical. Uh, and yet he has, he has his quality. And I think that this is part of Johnson's overall point in the play. Uh, which we'll have to talk about when we get to the uh, very end of the play. What, what point is Johnson trying to make with all this? And I think it's that uh, we shouldn't be too judgmental. We should be forgiving. We should be tolerant. We shouldn't see, as Corliss sees, a lot of this people in the fair as inherently lower than himself or worse than himself in any way. Um, that would be a very uh, ethical uh, position for Johnson to take that we could sympathize with here in the 21st century, I think, and that probably a lot of people, a lot of people could have sympathized with at the time. After all, it was a very popular play. Um, all right, let's see. Any other points to make? One more point to make. Uh, Coralus when he cannot find out from Trouble All which word he has checked, seems to come on another scheme. Corliss is quite willing to get the better of Windwife by hook or by crook if, if he can. And uh, he says, ah, I've got a beard that looks sort of like Trouble All's beard. So I think what we can expect him to do in Act 5 is to try to disguise himself as Trouble All. And... Um, in this way, somehow twist the game that uh, is going on between himself, Winwife, and and Grace. Okay.